Those of us who are of a certain age will remember a group of comedians known as the Marx Brothers, and most particularly we remember the cigar-smoking Groucho Marx. Many stories are told about Groucho, and among those that can be repeated in church, one of my favorites is from a time that Groucho was in an elevator and a group of priests walked in. One of the priests recognized Groucho and said, I'm so delighted to meet you. My mother is a huge fan of yours. Groucho looked at the priest and said, I didn't know you guys were allowed to have mothers. What a beautiful thing it is to have a mother. What a beautiful thing it is to be allowed to have a mother. A mother is the most important person in our life because a mother gives us life and then shows us how to live that life. There is hardly anything we have, hardly anything we know, hardly anything we are that did not come to us in some way from our mother. Even Jesus was allowed to have a mother. When God came down to earth, he did not drop down into some cabbage patch, nor was he brought by some stork, but he was born of a mother. That mother's name was Mary. Today we hear the beautiful story of how she found out that she was to be the mother of God. She was a mother like any other mother. She knew all the fears of a mother. And we are told that she was very much afraid at hearing the words of the angel. Who wouldn't be? She knew the fears of a mother. She knew all the joys of motherhood as well, those joys that all you mothers know so well. She also knew the sorrows of motherhood, including that greatest sorrow of all, when a mother has to bury a child. Mary knew all of this. She was truly a mother. One of my most poignant memories takes me back to when I was a very young priest, and a young couple gave birth to a child. The child was born with many health problems and lived only about a week. I remember the mother calling me to come to the hospital. When I got there, she said, My child is about to die. I don't want him to die in that cold box of an incubator. Would you please hold my child in your hands as he dies? And so I stood there, holding the tiny baby in my hands, with the father and mother caressing it, as the child's angelic soul was taken up to God. About a year later, I received another phone call from the same couple. They had once again given birth, and this time they asked me to be godfather to their child. The joys, the sorrows, and the fears of motherhood were all known to Mary. The last nine days before Christmas, are known as the Christmas Novena. And the Gospel reading for the first day of this Novena, December 17th, is the genealogy of Jesus, the most boring reading of the entire year, the begats. Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Judah and his brothers, and so forth, through 42 generations of unpronounceable names, 42 generations of men begetting sons. And then comes the final sentence of that genealogy. That statement which comes down like a lightning bolt into that male-studded genealogy. That statement which says, And Jacob begat Joseph, the spouse of Mary, and it was she, and not Joseph, who begat Jesus the Christ. 
as an old priest friend of mine is fond of saying, that one statement swoops down from heaven to destroy with one blow the silent lie that behind every significant occurrence in human history stand only men. Here we have the most significant event in all of history, God coming down to earth. And behind this event stands no man at all, but only a woman, Mary. What a beautiful thing that even Jesus was allowed to have a mother. How cold a motherless, Maryless church would be. No wonder that all the most ancient church traditions in the world, all those churches that go back to the time of the Apostles, the Orthodox, the Catholics, the Armenians, the Copts, and all the others, maintain such a tender love for Mary. How cold would be a motherless church? Each of us, no matter our gender, has a male psyche and a female psyche. And in order to be a balanced person, you have to be in touch with both sides of your spirit. No matter how macho we can claim to be, we have to be in touch with our feminine side as well in order to be a person of understanding, a person of compassion, in order to participate in that gift which God gives in such a special way to mothers. When I was in the hospital a few years ago, I wanted a nurse around me. I didn't care if it was a male nurse or a female nurse, but I wanted that nurse to be filled with motherly compassion and tenderness. I wanted that nurse to be in touch with the motherly side. To be a balanced person, we need both the masculine and the feminine. To be a balanced church, we need not only the Christ, we also need the mother. How beautiful that we are allowed to have such a mother. Mary was there as the mother of Jesus. She was there not only as the mother of joys, but also as the mother of sorrows. She was not only there at the joyful moment of the Annunciation. She was not only there in that wonderful moment of Bethlehem, but she remained close to her son even at the Mount of Calvary. There, standing at the foot of the cross, in the person of Mary, was every mother who has ever lost a child. Standing there in the person of Mary was every person who has ever known a sorrow. Standing there in the person of Mary was every one of us who has ever known a loss, a loneliness, a hurt, a fear. What a beautiful thing is motherhood, and how wonderful that we are allowed to have such a mother. Let us travel through Advent with Mary. It was she who celebrated that first Advent as no one else could. Let us receive from her the strength which prompted her to say yes to the angel of the Annunciation. Let us receive from her the courage which allowed her to make the long journey to Bethlehem to give birth to the Son of God in a stable. Let us receive from Mary the fortitude and perseverance which allowed her to remain by her Son even to the bitter end at the Mount of Calvary. Let us journey towards Christmas with Mary. For it is only an expectant mother who can fully know the joy, the hope, and the wonderment of Advent. How wonderful that we are allowed to have such a mother. <laughs> 